Hello guys, hope you're having a really good day as we move on through the week. We are now in Wednesday and you are getting a lot of content from me this week because we are finding a lot of interesting stuff going on in the hobby. So, if you like what I'm doing, like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that fun stuff. Uh, Discord is free, as I say in every single um, video that I do. It's all free, so come in and join whenever you like. And Patreon's down there too, feeling a bit generous, want to buy me a pint or something. So... Um, just before we got, this week we got some more hobby uh, nightmares coming up towards the end of the week. It uh, should be a rather large video because I've gotten quite a few large um, stories that I want to go through. And then this weekend, my little project this weekend is to finish the Astral Blades video. That is the store, uh, sorry, there's not the store, <laughs> I'm so used to saying that. That is the Channel Space Marine chapter, complete with pictures of the models and a full read-through of the lore and an, and an exploration of the lore and why I wrote it the way that I did. It's sort of like a, a mini writing exercise for if you're doing your own lore, things like that, right? So we'll be doing that towards the weekend too. But for now, I wanted to talk about recasts because this week I've been reading quite a few. Um, this is what I do in general. I learn just as much from being on YouTube as I teach. Um... Like the other day, I, I had a very I, did, I had a vague idea of what recasting was the other day when I did my when I did my video on how to make the hobby more affordable. And since then, uh, the comments are, are a few people have mentioned, like you know, recast and things like that. That seemed pretty cool and seemed like thing, things that people should be getting involved with to to make the hobby more um, successful in terms of being affordable. And to that, I, I always want to investigate these things. And I, I went and I read a few articles on what recasting was and how it works and, and how people go about it. And I came across one really cool article. Well, cool, I would say, more um, interesting. I'm not, I don't agree with all the points in the article, but it would be great for us to go over and discuss just what the hell is going on recasting and if it's a viable option for you. And then we will discuss what I think into, but I, do you know what? I'll preface this with what I think, okay? So, in terms of recasting Warhammer models, the one main reason I have for supporting certain people who do it, or everybody who does it, for, for that instance, if they, if they choose to do it, is because most of the people who do recasting, who go and get recasted models, come to me and say, look, Games Workshop and Forge World have priced me out of the hobby. They've literally priced me out. I can't take this anymore. I can't justify. I have kids. I have a mortgage. I can't justify spending this money on models. I just can't. But I love the hobby. And I want the new stuff. And I want to stick around. I want to be able to play with my friends. And um, So when there is a viable option out there for getting good quality models at prices that are quite ridiculous, then I'll take it. I can't argue with your logic. I can't, and I won't. I, I honestly think that um, this problem is quite a lot of the time of Games Workshop's own making. I really do. I, I think that they need to do a lot much of a better job in protecting people who want to stay in the hobby but don't, aren't made of money, you know? Um, people say, well, just save up. Well, I'm afraid at the same time, I've been in situations where you're working a full-time job and you don't have Warhammer money. You get nowhere near Warhammer money. You've got kids, Right? That's not how the life works these days, okay? Um, not everybody is in the same privileged situation that you are with a really well-paid job that you get to save money from, right? So, what I would like to say is, look, as much as people like to do the cold-hearted capitalism thing of get a better job, get more money, and get more Warhammer, okay, fine. There isn't an option for everybody. What if you're a home carer? What if your kids need homeschooling? What if you, what if you're, uh, what if you have more kids than you can handle? Right? Okay? What if you've been left with a load of kids? What if you've been left with, with with crippling mortgage payments from a relationship that blew up in your face? Right? You you don't know what situations life is a is a is a wildly complicated intrinsic thing and I think it's wrong to just blanket mark statement to everybody, well get a better job, get more money and get more Warhammer models. I don't agree with that, right? There are people out there who legitimately turn to recasting because if they want to stay in the hobby, it's literally their only choice. And to that, I respect you, and I say, hope I hope you find a good recaster, and you know, hats off to you. Yeah, enjoy the hobby just like everyone else. Now, on the flip side of that, as a former Games Workshop manager, 
I have come across many recasters in my time. Um, I, when I say many, a few a week. Who would come into my store and slam down their models very in, in a very entitled way and immediately start challenging people to play games of War 40,000 or Age of Sigmar. With clearly recasted models. Clearly models that you know are not Games Workshop models. I have had people who do this lie to me and say that they are Games Workshop models and that I'm... I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person I'm pointing out, you know, trying to insinuate that they're lying. You know, I've been told, well, your models are too expensive, so I should be able to play with whatever models I want in store. I've been told all sorts of things, and I disagree with every single one of them. Okay. If you go and get recasted models, I'm afraid you are not welcome at a Games Workshop store to play games with those models. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. It, it, I, I, I do not begrudge you getting those models as a person i don't i'm completely with you i may even be tempted to do it myself one day right but to uh, you have to understand when you take those models into a games workshop store and you start trying to play with them in the store if somebody comes in from head office or who has the power to discipline this games workshop manager he will he or she will get disciplined and may even lose their job right if you start using recasted models in the store Everybody will start using recasted models in the store. And you know that profit margin that he's trying to make up? He's trying to he's trying to grow his store financially? Yeah. No one's going to buy models in the store if they can go and get them on this really cheap Chinese site that you found for a tenth of the price. Right? It's not cool. You're costing this guy his livelihood. Stop doing shit like that. Okay? That's where I draw the line. I completely understand your reasoning for going and getting recasted models. But don't be a dick about it. Right? And also the guys who get recasted models that are quite good and feel the need to tell everybody in a hobby store. You're a douche. You're a douche. Because if you're in a hobby store, there are people who are working there who are paying their own mortgages and are paying their own rent, buying their own food, putting, clear kid, uh, putting kids on their clothes backs, putting clothes on their kids' backs with the money that they make at that store. And you're driving people towards... You know, Chinese counterfeiters and other counterfeiters from from or, or, or like Taiwan, places like that, right? That's where you're driving these people. That's wrong. Keep it to yourself. I have no problem with you recasting, getting recasts, but do not damage the hobby with it. Okay, right. Now let's have a little look at the. At the article that I found. So, the truth behind... Oh, where, where'd my voice go? The truth behind Wargaming Recasts. And this is from Red Points. They are, they are quite... They're a pretty cool site. Uh, quite a lot of their... their um, quite a lot of their articles are very interesting. Especially for geeky stuff. So, let's read through this together. And we'll see what we come up with, huh? And we'll see what we think. So, whenever a product becomes successful, counterfeits and replicas will follow. Wargaming is no exception. The process of counterfeiting these miniatures, known as recasting, has plagued wargaming companies for decades. Counterfeits mould authentic wargaming minis and sell the recasts at a discount. Many many consumers have irreverent attitudes towards hobbyist creations, which they do, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, recasting can break the back of the wargaming hobby. Well, it can. It can. Let's see if they are going to be more alarmist than anything else. So, wargaming... The hobby built around collecting, painting, and using miniature figures to play in the strategic tabletop battles. A single miniature can cost more than $100, and can cost a hobbyist uh, dozens of hours to assemble and paint fully. It should come as no surprise that when there are, are the, that, that where a niche hobby like Wargaming may lack in mass appeal, it more than makes up for with consumer loyalty and immersion. Oh, I agree with that. That is comp that's really good. Really good wording there. Illegal copies of these figurines are widely available online. They're found on websites of counterfeits them, of counterfeiters themselves, within protective and secretive communities, and, as always, on enormous e-commerce sites. The internet has expanded the problem by offering a huge market of consumers to the illegal counterfeiters and allowing them to scale up their recasting operations. All right. So what is recasting? Recasting is a method of counterfeiting gaming miniatures or minis or models, etc., which is fairly straightforward to carry out, which requires little investment to start the process. In simple steps, recasters first take an existing mini, then cover it in a moulding rubber. After a few coats uh, of moulding rubber, 
Each added, uh, each added once the layer has dried, the mold can be removed from the original mini. The mold is now filled with liquid resin and left to dry, and voila! A counterfeit model is made. Okay. Hmm. Is the shitty thing about about recasting though. Most of the time, you can tell a recasted army because they're all posed exactly the same. Which is, you yeah. know. Anyway. Answering legal questions about recasting. Can I recast copyrighted minis if I never plan to profit from them? <clears throat> With the explicit authorization from the copyright holder, yes. Otherwise, even creating an account fixed just for yourself is illegal. Per Games Workshop's IP policy, and we've all read about this, haven't we? Reproduction for personal use is not an automatic exemption from copyright protection in many ter territories worldwide. So that basically means if you bring one of their model, one of these models into, into a 40k store, Games Workshop store, we can say you're breaking the law and we're going to call the fucking police. Because you're stealing from us. Right? A Games Workshop manager could make that point if you take these models into a store. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure a huge, the vast majority of you would never do this. Would never be so disrespectful to somebody's business, right? Would have some common sense about you. But some people do. And I'm telling you now, if you do this, you're breaking the law by taking those models into... You're breaking copyright law by printing those models and then taking them into a Games Workshop store. You're flaunting that you're breaking the law. Not smart. Okay? So, can I sell my minis? Are there any restrictions? If the miniature is an authentic piece, then go for it. If the mini is infringing on any IP rights, then you mustn't resell it. If you're unsure, we'd recommend you stay on the safe side in case it uh, yeah, poses legal risk. Is it legal to copy the general design if I'm careful to not use any protected symbols and logos? All right, this is an interesting one. Okay. Copyrights and design rights still apply here. In general, we always recommend you either get permission from the IP, or, uh, from the IP owner. Okay, why would you say either? Otherwise, you could work on creating something original. So, I disagree with this. Because, um, if, say what, if I wanted to create a Land Raider mold. Well, Land Raider is based on a World War One tank. So, what? I'm not allowed to recreate a World War, World War One tank because Games Workshop own it? No. That's ridiculous, right? So, I would say, in this one, um, it's a legal grey area, you know. I doubt Games Workshop are going to come after you if you if you create something that looks mildly similar. But saying that, they have created Space Marines and Eldar and things like that that look pretty fucking cool and look you know, kind of original. They're very striking, right? Um, create something like that. And yeah, I can see where you would start saying, well, hang on a second. So, let's see what Redpoint says on their views on fake miniatures. It's just a bit of plastic. Why should I pay so much? Okay, they say... This is a prevalent argument, and one that is a common concern for customers. But one that doesn't really hold much weight when analysed. Why is this little plastic model, which is shorter than any that shorter than my finger, so expensive? Well, it's important to remember that the price reflects the entire creation process of the model and the game itself. The game developers, those who create the artworks and designs, the sculptors, the, and the engineers, the manufacturer, all these factors need to be considered when pricing these miniatures. Because they're all essential parts of the creation process, for most companies, it takes eight, 9 to 18 months to create a miniature product. Depending on the amount of unique sculpts in a set, the type of material and the detail of the model. So to make these products, though they are small, a significant amount of hours is required. Yes, I agree. But I also think that Games Workshop make... Uh, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disregard this because... Um, <sighs> models should be expensive for what they are. I agree. I agree, because the process to create them is, is relatively um, costly for a company the size of Games Workshop. I agree. But, I firmly agree that Games Workshop could sell their product at 40% their, their, their current cost and still make a massive amount of profit. Okay, This right here does not excuse greed on Games Workshop's part. Okay? If you're losing sales to recasters, then your products aren't high quality enough to justify the price. Recasters can, can, can afford to simply recast. They don't have to worry about any of the overheads that legitimate companies do. Okay. When they make Warhammer recasts, they don't make the designs, do any marketing, or do any work to create and uphold the, expense, the expansive world of lore found in Warhammer 40k. 
Well, I would argue neither did the Games Workshop most of the time. Um, they steal copyrighted content from authentic brands, cut out all the creative work required to bring minis to life, and simply print out the work of others and to sell at a discounted price. It shouldn't be surprising, then, that they are able to sell these minis so cheaply, since they're barely doing any of the work. Yeah, I agree. Um, nothing wrong with that statement. I would also add that, you know, Games Workshop, it's pretty cheeky, that, because Games Workshop do a lot to kill to kill the expansive lore of War 40,000, rather than, you know, burgeoning it on and making it better. But, you know, whatever. Uh, but I do agree with the with the wider point that this article is making here, in that, uh, you know, you're barely doing any work as a recaster, so yes, you know, th this point here doesn't really hold much water at all, to be honest with you. Um... In fact, no, it does. It does. I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious there. It does. But it, as long as you link it back into what we've already said, you know, like, like Games Workshop are already... It's a problem Games Workshop are making. If they sold the price, if they sold the models at a reasonable price, we wouldn't be having this problem. So yes, this is kind of justifiable. But this blanket statement of, you know, your, your product sucks and you're not putting in any, any effort mm, doesn't really hold water to me. So, it's out of print. Recasting is the only way I can get this model. Okay, here's the big one for me. Limited editions and discounted lines can be very frustrating. We understand this clearly. However, this is not a justification for recasting the models, nor for supporting counterfeits. Hmm. The first issue is that it devalues the property of the hobbyists who do own these models. Okay. To have a real version of a limited edition item can be prestigious in, a, in such a hobby, and it is the prerogative of the copyright holder to keep certain product lines limited. If you do own a limited edition item and somebody else makes an illegal copies of that, uh, of that item, then the value of and prestige of your limited edition item drops significantly. Okay, I disagree. Um, because most recasts, you can tell whether they're recast or not. Um, and the ones that you can't are more expensive. So then they're nearly as much as the fucking model you're going to buy in the first place. So um, I would disagree with that. I, I can look at, say, Castellan Crow, and I have looked at recasts of Castellan Crow, and I can tell straight away, yep, yeah, that's not Castellan Crow. Okay, that is not Castellan Crow. That is completely different. There's a recast. Okay, I have that limited edition model. Um, thank you, James. <laughs> um, but I have that limited edition model. And look, I do not agree with this point, okay? It is Games Workshop's choice what they make limited and what they do not. And Games Workshop don't just make limited edition things limited edition. They make everything that they sell limited edition. Unless it's a baseline product, Eldar Guardians or something, everything else in a, in a nice box set, you know, Crow, things like that, will be limited for a large amount of time to create fear of missing out. Okay? To create FOMO. Which is bullshit. You're just punishing the hobbyists at this point. I do not agree with this point at all. I think recasting, the only way that recasting is a positive force in the hobby, for me, in terms of, like, I can't really see an argument against it, is this. It's you get to stick your middle finger up at Games Workshop and say, yeah, do you know that model you say I can't have because I didn't have the money at the time, right? Yeah, fuck you, I've got it now. I don't need to, I don't need to give you any money. You don't deserve my money. You don't deserve my money because you stopped me from giving you money. You stopped me from giving you money, right, to create fear of missing out. To exploit the whales within your within your um, within your hobby, okay? That's that's what you're doing. So you're keeping people like me from getting that that model that I like. So fuck you! I'm going to recast that. I found a really good deal. I'm going to get from here. N nothing wrong with that, for me. Nothing wrong with that. Yep, yeah. breaking copyright law. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yep. Yeah. But for me, <clears throat> this is the one point that I don't think they have a leg to stand on. I honestly don't. It's their choice and what they make limited and what they don't. All of this stuff I agree with. Yep, you know, they're putting a lot of work. Yep, 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 yep. But this, I do not agree with. It's their own choice what they make limited edition and what they don't. And when you make a, an essential model, wh when people have been asking you for years to bring out Sisters of Battle, and when they came out, there was a limited number of them. Um, Black Templars, new Black Templars, when they came out, limited number of them, right? Okay. And now Castellan Crow. People have been begging for new Grey Knight models for years. You finally bring out one. One. One new Grey Knight model. And you ensure that 90% of Grey Knight players can't get a hold of him. Scalpers can, though. But you don't care about that, though, do you? You don't care about that. 
You don't care about people gouging more money out of your fan base. No, 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 no. That, that's, that's not what you care about. Yeah, so fuck this point. It's no load, load of nonsense. And, um, yeah. Hate it. Um, so, yeah, out of print, yeah, I, I, I don't agree. I don't agree. All right, okay. I have a problem with this particular company, so I don't feel bad about recasting their stuff. Okay. This is highly discouraging for fledging designers and entrepreneurs who are thinking about starting their own line of gaming products. I agree with that. If this industry isn't profitable for people who put years of hard work into it, then why would anyone invest in it? Entrepreneurial artists dream of becoming successful. If the most successful artists in their field are still scraping by, then new talent will soon dry up and look elsewhere for paths to capitalise on their creativity. Okay, I agree. I agree. But, but I think a better way of talking about this would be I have a problem with this particular company, so I don't feel bad about recasting their stuff. Okay, right, okay. There are better ways to go about getting the models than recasting, the, getting their recasted stuff. eBay, for instance, we went, we went on about it yesterday, right? eBay, you know, Etsy, secondhand market, other stores, other online retailers. There are ways to go about getting their models without giving them too much money, right? There are ways of doing it, okay? So, one sec. But what I would say is I really like this point. This is highly, highly discouraging for fledging designers and entrepreneurs who are thinking about starting their own line of gaming products. Well, well, whilst I agree, I would also say it's a warning sign to not take the piss out of your customer base. I, I literally, I don't think, I'm very untrusting of people who want to protect large corporations. And in terms of, I think this article's framing this in a way. Well, think about the little guy. Well, it's not the little guy that we're talking about, though, is it, Red Points? Okay. It's not the little guy we're talking about. It's Games Workshop we're talking about. Okay. Let's be honest. I know you've not used many of their models in, in this, for, and for good reason as well. I think that you've done that on purpose, you know, to, 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 skew, the, to skew it towards a smaller, smaller, um, smaller content creators. But this is highly discouraging for fledging designers and entrepreneurs. Yes, okay. Um, I would argue that a lot of those entrepreneurs are getting into the business of creating models because of Games Workshop being a shitty company, not the other way around. They're not getting into it because, like, oh, well, Games Workshop are doing such a good job. I'll do exactly the same thing. No, they're not doing that. They're looking at what Games Workshop do, and they're going, fuck those guys. I can do better than that, and I can keep people happy too. Okay? So... I kind of disagree with this line, but I disagree with the sentiment that is uh, that is put in. Okay, I really do. I disagree with the sentiment. I I, I I I agree. We need to encourage more, you know, smaller designers. But hey, you know, let, let's not go overboard. Okay, and recasting allows you to dip your toe into the water before you spend a lot of money on a hobby which you might not enjoy. A huge amount of people find themselves curious about hobbies like these, especially in the last few years since. Uh, since geek culture, well, thanks guys, geek culture has become a lot more mainstream and less socially ostracized. Yeah, ostracized by people like you, by the way, normies, but you know, this is moving on. But many hobbies, like wargaming, for example, are not cheap by any means. They are deep, immersive pastimes which take some investment before you can actually take part. And since the appeal is sometimes rather niche, not everyone has a circle of friends who can introduce them to the hobby. All very good points. All very good points. Let's see how they try and break these down. But this is where the brick and mortar shops are especially useful. We spoke to Privateer Press, who, you ha who had this to say. Counterfeiting also hurts the backbone of every local gaming community. I agree. The local game store, by removing revenue, they need to continue th to offer crude critical services, like a place to meet up and play. I agree. The organization of tournaments and leagues. I agree. And as a vital center of recruitment for players to ensure a game community continues to grow. I agree. But... But I think you're missing the point. I, I I think they've seen a very a very tricky thing to get around here, and and they've 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 taken the point somewhere else. Um, I agree with what you're saying, right? Um, every hobby store needs revenue to grow, and this is exactly what I said before. Do not take these models and start spouting off in one of these stores about where you got these models from, right? Okay, get good recasts if you're going to get them. Take them to a store like this like a normal hobby store, and just play with them. And if somebody asks you where, they, where you got them, 
Fucking tell them the store. This store. This store. If they're good recasts, say this store. If they're bad recasts, say, yeah, I, I got them recasted. And people go, yeah, I can tell. They look like fucking shit, right? But tell a white lie, man. Honestly. If you want to support your local store and you've gotten recasts that look really, really good, if somebody asks you where you got them from and they look just like Games Workshop models, just say, I got them here, dude. We've got to support a local game store. I know, I know, you know, you might feel bad about it and I would as well, but I would rather the store bees there and you are going to get asked that question. You know, where'd you get these models from? Blah, 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 right? Just say the store. Support the store. Just say, look, you know, I, I need to go... To or... If you want to be truthful about it, you want to be totally truthful about it, say, I got these as recasts because I was really low on money, but whenever I get anything now, I get them from the store because it's important to support the store, man. They do a lot for us, right? And they may tell you to fuck off because you're a hypocrite, but at the same time, you're the one who's, who's making the decision to go and get these recasted models that are technically illegal, okay? So the stores need protecting, especially local, friendly local game stores. And you going in and spouting off about where you got these models from isn't the best way to make sure that they get new customers, is it? All right? So find a way to get around it. I personally would, would feel bad about lying. And knowing that I'd have to lie, I probably wouldn't get recasts. Because if I'm going to play in a store, I know I'm going to get asked the question. And I would feel so bad about saying that shit in a store, I just probably wouldn't do it. I probably wouldn't do it. You know, um, the, the hobby that I, I'm in at the moment with Warhammer is quite affordable. You know, um, I use eBay a lot. Things like that. As I showed you yesterday. I, I I bought a thirty a a set that was normally thirty eight pounds for thirty seven pounds fifty in Games Workshop. Got it for eighteen pounds. You know, shit like that. It's quite affordable now. Like I, I use eBay. I, I don't bother with with any of the uh, it's new on Sprue as well. And I I just use eBay and and sites like that. I don't don't buy from Games Workshop themselves. There are ways to not give Games Workshop your money and still enjoy the hobby without going to scummy ass uh, 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 recasters, right? So. Um, this is an old school game. The minis are assembled and painted by hand by the hobbyists, and the games are played face to face. So the local game store is vital to the survival of the industry. I agree. Without it, players would find it much harder to meet up, and the community would suffer terribly. I completely agree. Besides, if your first impression of the hobby is of a shabby, counterfeited models, would you really feel enthused enough to dive into the hobby? Red points thinks not. Well, you know, then that's your opinion. But um, <clears throat> really cool article made a few really good points and made a few really bad ones but you know my my uh, my feeling on recasts now and how i think you should go about it and, and if you need to get recasted stuff fine you know i'm not going to judge you at all because i think that would be a really shitty thing to do so I, I would never judge somebody for doing something like that but on the other hand you need to behave responsibly if you get recasted models. Number one, make sure you get good ones that can at least try and fool people. You know, don't get shitty ones and just throw them at the table. It's disrespectful to the hobby and to your opponent, right? It's just it's just shitty. Shitty thing to do, right? And you're wasting your money. Get a really good recasted model, okay, that you can hardly tell isn't Games Workshop or you can't tell isn't Games Workshop would be even better, right? Somebody asks you where you got it from, either say from the hobby store that you're in or hobby store nearby or be very honest and tell them where you got it from but say hey i don't do that anymore it's important to uh, to it to support your local hobby store right literally that's it that's it right and if you're not prepared to do one of those two things i wouldn't get recasted models and take them into a store because you know if you're playing at home man that's your that's your business your home an Englishman's home is his castle, as we say. Look, you, you do you. And you go around to your friend's house, you do you, man. There are some really cool recasts out there. Go for it. No problem. But going to somebody's uh, place of work where they're selling that stuff with counterfeited models, number one, kind of an uncool thing to do. Um, unless they're really good recasts. And you can pass them off as normal games workshop, so nobody asks anything anyway. But if you've got models where you know that you might be asked a few questions going into one of those stores, I'm sorry, man, but like these are the price. This is the price you pay for your cheap ass models. I'm sorry, you know, like you may get asked a few questions, and the guy who owns that store is well within his rights to come over and say, "Yeah, you need to leave because I can't. I don't sell this stuff here." Like, 
You know, you're selling recasts of models that I'm selling. You're taking away business, and you're you're a walking advertisement for why people shouldn't give me money. You're a walking advertisement for why people shouldn't give me money to put clothes on the backs of my kids. So you need to leave, right? And they will be completely within their rights to do that. I'm sorry, but that just is what it is. I completely understand your your reasons for going and getting recasted models. I completely understand the fact that Games Workshop and Forge World try and price shop the hobby. I get that completely. But there are other ways of going about it where you don't need to go to these scummy people and getting counterfeited models, right? And if you need to do this, if you need to do this, and it's the only way that you can go about doing the hobby, try and wait until you can find a good one. So you can at least pass it off as a Games Workshop model, you know? Um, and if it's in your own home, hey, I don't care. I don't care. Like, if it's in your own home, or you're in your own club, or whatever, yeah, I don't care, man. You do what you do you. You do you, completely. Completely. Right? And I get I get where you're coming from. And um, one, one good thing I, I have seen one guy do, is that when he was doing his Space Marine Army, he got one, he got a few recasted um, Space Marine, um, basically, you know, squads, you know, your normal squads. And he interspersed them with actual Citadel miniatures. And I thought that was a really cool idea. In fact, you know, and it made his hobby that much more affordable. And when people said, hey, where'd you get these from? He said, this store. Because I did. You know? A really good way of doing it. A really, really good way of doing it. He, he would go and get, like, a, a Space Marine, like I say, say, a 10-man Space Marine squad. You know, um, four of them would be, you know, recasted models, and six of them would be actual models from Games Workshop that were he bought from that store that he was in. And it's a really good way of going about doing it. So... That is my opinion on recasting anyway, and how I think it could make the hobby more affordable, or what I think you should be doing. Those are the reasons why I didn't put it in the video the other day. Number one, I didn't know too much about it. And number two, I don't think you should really be doing it in most circumstances. Um, but I don't judge you if you do. Right, that's very important to note. I don't want any squeeing in the comments saying that, Oh, I'm going to unsubscribe. Cause... No, I don't want any of that, right? Because I completely get where you're coming from. Completely get it. Doesn't mean you have to agree, though. Right? And, and in 90% of cases, I don't agree. You know? I, 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 I respect your right to do what you want with your money. I respect your right to 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 save it and not give Games Workshop any money. But there are other ways of going about doing it than than um, supporting a practice that sort of sort of kills the hobby, dude. Especially if you're... But again, as I've said, that is, that is a harsh thing to say. It depends how you act once you have these models in your possession, right? If you act in an irresponsible way, where you go into a hobby store and you tell people where you got the where you get the models from, and that they shouldn't give give money to the people in the store, and that they shouldn't you know spend their money on these models, you go get recast instead. Yeah, you're a fucking prick, dude, and you shouldn't be in the hobby. Go elsewhere, go elsewhere, right? Okay, because you're you're costing people their business, and that's a really shitty thing to do, you know, really shitty. And you haven't thought it through. Um, or you have, and you're just a piece of shit. But, like, you know. Um, but if you're a responsible recaster, you know, you will go and you'll get these models. You get them at a good standard. You get them to a point where people can't really tell whether the game's workshop or not. And if you're a really responsible recaster, you will intersperse them with actual models that you bought from the actual store. So no one asks any questions. But you've saved yourself a load of money in the hobby. That gets a thumbs up from me. Right? All right. No matter what you do with your money and your models, I love you a long time. And what do you think about recasting? Let me know in the comments below. Love you all. Have a good day. And I'll speak to you next time. Have a good one.